Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Monday of the first week of Advent, November 30th, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 80, beginning at verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 332 from Lutheran Service Book, Savior of the Nations Come. Today we sing stanzas one through four. Savior of the nations come, Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. Not by human flesh and blood, by the Spirit of our God, was the Word of God made flesh, woman's offspring pure and fresh. Here a maid was found with child, yet remained a virgin mild. In her womb this truth was shown, God was there upon his throne. Then stepped forth the Lord of all, from his pure and kingly hall, God of God, yet fully man, his heroic course began. Today's reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the sixth and seventh chapters. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, 
and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste. And the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, the king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to wage war against it, but could not yet mount an attack against it. When the house of David was told, Syria is in league with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and Shir Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the washer's field, and say to him, Be careful, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smoldering stumps of firebrands at the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah, has devised evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and terrify it, and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabiel as king in the midst of it. Thus says the Lord God, It shall not stand, and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within sixty-five years Ephraim will be shattered from being a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us, in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to them who sit in darkness into the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today the Holy Church rejoices in the festival of St. Andrew, Apostle. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Andrew was among the first of our Lord's disciples. He was the son of Jonah and brother of Simon, whom Jesus renamed Peter. The family was from Bethsaida in Galilee. With his brother, Andrew was a fisherman by trade. In the Gospel of John, we find Andrew introducing others to the Lord Jesus. Andrew had apparently been a follower of St. John the Baptist. Upon hearing John point to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Andrew and another disciple followed Jesus and spent the day with him. Later, Andrew first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Thus, Andrew is regarded as the first home missionary, recognizing the importance of telling those closest to him about the Lord and introducing them to him. Sometime later in Galilee, Jesus would specifically summon Peter and Andrew, James and John, from their vocation as fishermen to follow him. He would promise them that from now on they would become fishers of men. In John 12, some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover desired to see Jesus. They first approached Philip, also a native of Bethsaida, and Philip turned to Andrew for assistance. Andrew and Philip brought word to Jesus, who exalted that as he is lifted up from the earth, he will draw all people to himself. Thus, Andrew may also be regarded as the first foreign missionary recognizing the need for introducing those who come from distant lands to Jesus. Andrew witnessed his Lord's resurrection, being with the others in the upper room on Easter evening and the week following. After Pentecost and the dispersion of the apostles, Andrew is said to have preached his master's resurrection as far as Scythia or Thrace. According to tradition, he was martyred by crucifixion in Patras in Achaia. Because Andrew felt unworthy to die upon the same kind of cross as his Lord had, he begged to be crucified on an X-shaped cross. This was granted him. Hence, his symbol in church art is a cross in that particular shape. After his death, his bones were at one time interred in Constantinople and later transferred to the Cathedral of Amalfi in Italy. St. Andrew's Day always determines the beginning of Advent for the first Sunday in Advent falls on the Sunday nearest to his festival. We pray. Almighty God, by your grace the Apostle Andrew obeyed the call of your Son to be a disciple. Grant us also to follow the same Lord Jesus Christ in heart and life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. 
Amen. God bless your day, beloved.